on his arm. He fell awfully heavy. Are you all right, Joe? I think he broke his arm. You're going to have to lay up for a while, Joe. But don't worry, Mr. Davis will keep the job open for you. And you make sure he doesn't worry, Mrs. Green. Keep him quiet and give him plenty to eat. Well, just went along, Doctor, to see how you're getting on. It'll be a month or two, I'm afraid, Davis. You'll see that he knows how to apply for compensation, I suppose. We'll see he doesn't go short. You'll get him back as quick as possible. One man mating means a lot of extra work. I'm sure he does. Well, I can count on you. Goodbye, David. Goodbye. Right. Well, Joe? Morning. How's the hand? Straighten it. Bend it. As far as you can. Straighten it. Well, let me see what I can do. It's got very stiff, Joe. I want you to use these fingers as much as you possibly can. When you're doing this sort of job, for instance. Well, goodbye, Joe. I'll drop in again next week when I get back from town. Good day, Doctor. and try to stop. How? Oh. Looks as if his leg's broken. We have this room especially equipped for the treatment of shock. Everything is kept ready so that it can go into action at a moment's notice. The first thing is to abolish pain, so we give him an injection of morphia. The second is to get the patient really warm. We use radiant heat or an electric blanket. And if there has been much loss of blood or the shock is severe, we give a blood transfusion. Nurse, when reducing the fracture, we give a spinal injection. The patient is quite conscious, but feels no pain. For a fracture of this kind, we use Kirshner's method. A steel wire is driven through the heel bone, and the two parts are drawn together. X-ray photographs are taken, of course, both before and after setting. We can see the photographs within a minute or two. When we know the broken bones are nicely set, we immobilize the leg in a plaster cast. Plaster is molded to the shape of the leg and keeps the fracture absolutely still, so that the bones can mend as quickly as possible. Of course, when our patients are in bed after an operation, the joints get stiff and the muscles tend to waste away if they're not being used. That can't be helped. But when they come out of plaster, we get to work on them with massage and a special electric treatment called pharaohism. You must be getting marvellous results from all that up-to-date equipment. But tell me, how long before that man with a broken leg can be back in work? Well, of course, the bones unite in 10 or 12 weeks. I know that. But how long before he can be back on his job? Tell you the truth, I don't know. As surgeons, we reckon our job is to mend broken bones, not to keep statistics as to when patients will return to employment. He'll go on attending as an outpatient for some time, of course. 
Other people have statistics proving that though the bones unite in 12 weeks, the man may be unable to return to work for 12 months. This is my colleague, Mr. Thomas. He wants us to start what he calls a rehabilitation service for accident cases. Off work for 12 months? Why, I get as good results myself. You see, that's what I've been saying all along. Up-to-date equipment alone gets you no further. Yes, but why not? We do our best. I think I can tell you why not. The patient comes to hospital in an ambulance. We abolish shock, we abolish pain. What about fear? Fear of being crippled, fear of losing one's job. What do we do about that? Nothing. We've done away with splints and used plaster instead. When we get the patient out of plaster, we try to restore the use of his muscles by giving him massage and electric treatment. What do we make him do for himself? Nothing. When he leaves the hospital and becomes an outpatient, he is still not cured. He goes on coming to the hospital twice a week for massage and once a month to see the doctor. Do you know what he does with the rest of his time? He does nothing. Think of your outpatient sitting at home in the back street of a city. He has to convalesce for weeks and months. Do you know what he has to live on while he's convalescing? Damn little. And most of that is taken up with rent. He probably doesn't know how to use his leisure actively, like the man in the country. And if he spends money on a glass of beer or a visit to the pictures, he's spending the price of a meal. On top of that, he knows that his employer will be scared of giving him back his job, if only because of the insurance complications should he be injured again. Is it surprising that in the end he either becomes a chronic out of work, or else gets back when he can, not to his proper job, but to any job, anything that will bring him in a little cash. Do you expect this man to get well, to take up his work again as if nothing had happened? You see, for you as a surgeon, it shouldn't be only a question of mending broken bones, but of putting your patient right back where he started from. Not in the narrow physical sense, but in the broader sense as a human being, as a workman, back on his job. That's what you mean by that word, rehabilitation. Yes, and it's not just a dream of my own. There are several rehabilitation centers already. For the Air Force, for dockers, for miners, for railway men, the army overseas, and the government emergency hospitals are working on the idea too. Go on, please. Let's take a difficult case for a start. A man who's broken his back. Yes, we think we'll have Smith fit again in about eight or nine months from now. Mm-hmm. We'll get in touch with you again then, anyway, and let you know. Oh, yes, he'll be fit for his old job, all right. Good morning, Bill. Good morning. Looking well this morning. Fine movements you've got. You know, you wouldn't think you'd had a broken back, would you? Good morning, Eric. Morning. Looking well? Yes, I feel fine. That's good. Good morning, Smith. I've just been on the telephone to your employers, and they're quite definitely going to keep your job open for you. By the way, Smith, since you've managed to knock yourself about as a lot, we're not going to keep you in this hospital. We're going to send you to the country. are important because they're exciting and so the body gets exercised and the injury is forgotten. But the key to the whole thing seems to be the gymnasium. Remember, in the hospital, directly the damaged bones had been set and immobilized, the patient had to work to keep his muscles in order even while he was still in bed. The gymnasium carries on the idea. There are two jobs to be done. First, the whole body of the patient must be kept fit Secondly, there must be special exercises for the injured part. 
Take the man with the broken back. After the general exercises with everyone else, he breaks off to do his special exercises. You see, the point is that every man must work hard to get himself fit, not wait to have it done for him. Getting fit is a whole time job. So all the passive ways of getting fit, the things a man has done to him, take second place to the active ways, the things a man does for himself. Yet that's not quite right. Put it this way, the surgeon in charge is like the conductor of an orchestra. He has a lot of instruments to play with, and it's his business to see that they all harmonize and work in together. Each individual case calls for a different tune, and mostly it's the active work that needs to dominate. These men are all recovering from broken backs. Another instrument the surgeon can play on is occupation. Men can get interested in crafts, where they have to use movements which help their particular trouble. It's another way of getting exercise without tears. Unconsciously, these men are loosening stiff arms and legs. And the occupations need not only be arty crafty, they can be useful too. And that works against the fear of incapacity. These men sawing logs had broken backs too. The key to the whole thing is normality. The place has its own discipline, but it isn't like a hospital. Men wear their own clothes, even over plaster, sit about and talk as if they were in a club. You'll get a lot of the proof as to whether the method is right or not by just listening. gives a song. Look here, look at this, what's this? Now stand it around and play on it. Play right, so I'll go now. It's a blank. Here, what's all the game here? What's this tic tacking going on? Come on, play that game. <laughs> when I first came here, I thought it was a convalescent hole. Yes, but you found out different pretty soon. Yes, when I first came, they brought me into the restroom, and there was no one in. And they came as a shop when I heard they were all in the gymnasium doing exercises. Ah, and they make you work hard before you get better. Yes, but we can stand that if it's going to do us any good. Sure. 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 Oh, I wish the grand half of you can stick it. <laughs> <laughs> you see, these people know they're going to get well, and they know they're going to get their jobs back. We've been making that clear to them from the moment they arrive in hospital. Just a moment. You're not suggesting that every accident case that arrives in a hospital must go out to a special centre? No, only the more serious cases. Many can reach full recovery in the hospital if you have a proper accident service and use these methods. What about those people whom you know won't get perfectly well, who will always be more or less crippled? I think I can answer that. Let's take somebody who's had to have a limb amputated and who did work of a kind he can't very well do with an artificial limb. We'll suppose that this man can't be promised his old job. Obviously, this is where the hospital almoner comes in again. Nowadays, officials from the Ministry of Labor will call in at the hospitals and discuss ways and means of getting crippled patients back to work. We naturally think that it is best for the country, as well as the disabled person, if he or she can be got back into work as soon as possible. Not to any old job, but to the most skilled job they can manage. It's decided that this man will be perfectly capable of working in a factory. First, he must have his artificial limb fitted. After this, he goes into a workshop and is shown the kind of tools he's going to be able to use. He has been given back hope. 
He knows he's not going to be thrown out onto the scrap heap, but will be able to come back to life as a useful citizen. While learning to use his new arm, he learns a new job. He has chosen electric welding. When he's fully trained, he can go like anybody else and take a job in a factory. He is once more a useful member of the community. I see not only cripples, but anybody can be retrained for new jobs. I'll go further than that. All of them, men, women and children, can be brought back to life. But you know, even after serious accidents, very few have to be retrained. Our job is to rehabilitate people, to get them back as they were, to make them as if they'd never had an accident. With an organized accident service, I don't believe that more than one in a hundred fracture cases need be retrained. Can you prove that? Yes, on paper. But I won't do that. You go out and see for yourselves the places that are working on the lines I've described. Go and watch the men, women and children coming back to life. You'll get the proof you want. three things that matter. Good starting, which depends on the skill of the surgeon and on never letting the patient get worried. Good finishing, which depends on the patient who must work hard for recovery. Good teamwork, which involves everybody. Surgeon, patient, his family, the medical staff, the state, employers. We must get this team working together. This way, both the individual and the country will profit most. This way, life begins again. Ooh. 